Hello, everyone. For this last lesson on electromagnetism, we're going to talk about a couple different applications of electromagnetism um, and finish up with uh, a couple devices that are actually pretty important for our daily lives. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, something called a solenoid. And a solenoid is basically just a coil of wire. Sometimes a solenoid has um, what's known as a core in it, uh, or, or sometimes not. Sometimes it's an air core solenoid, which is really just a coil of wire. And what we're gonna do in this case is just look at, or rather in this lesson is we're just gonna look at how does a magnetic field form around a solenoid. Okay, so the first thing we need to make clear is that an electromagnet is something that we create when it's 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 a, it's a magnet that we create when we run electricity through it okay so if there's no electricity there's no magnet but as soon as we turn on the electricity we have a magnet in fact it can be quite a powerful one and a solenoid as i've already mentioned is just a coil of wire so in the diagram here you can see a couple things going on the um i guess it's yellow uh coil going like this is is the is the wire so that's the actual functional part of the solenoid and you can see in red i've indicated the uh the current right the current coming in from the right hand side at least the way i'm looking at it probably the way you're looking at it so the right hand side of the wire the current is going in and the left hand side the current is coming out okay and furthermore we can you can see in the kind of bluey purple color the magnetic field lines that are created Okay, so we already talked about Ersted's discovery that when you have a current carrying conductor, it creates a magnetic field. And so in this case, our current carrying conductor is the wire. It just happens to be coiled into a loop, or into, sorry, uh, coiled up rather, in, as a solenoid. And so the magnetic field that we get looks like that. If you look at very carefully at it, you'll see that many, uh, most of the field lines are actually down the center uh, of the core, right? They're, they're, they're down the center of the coil. And so that means that the magnetic field is very strong there. But outside of the coil, there are very few lines. In fact, the way it's drawn here, there's only one on, e on either side. And so that means that the magnetic field is very weak outside of the coil, okay? And that's, part, and that's by design. Again, the idea is that this coil of wire, as long as we pass the current through it, we have a magnet. But if there's no current, no magnet. Right. One last thing is that uh, it, so, so if you if you look closely at the magnetic field, the way it's drawn here, it actually looks a lot like a bar magnet, where the north pole would be on the left hand side and the south pole would be on the right hand side. Okay. So electromagnets have a couple different applications. Um, in general, uh, the idea is that you want to use this, this concept that the magnet is not always on, but can be turned on and off at will. So in the case of a junkyard on the right-hand side, you see there's kind of a crane there with a large electromagnet at the end of the crane. And what it's doing is it's basically picking junk up. You know, it's not using like a claw or something like that to pick up the junk like you, you know, like at one of those UFO catcher games. But in this case, it's using the electromagnet at the end to pick up metal, well, to pick up iron, I suppose, uh, or steel, and move it from one location to the other in the junkyard, okay? So that's really good because you can, you know, if you think about it, the operator can turn on the electromagnet, pick up some stuff, move it over here, and then turn off the electromagnet, and boom, the, the junk will all fall down. Your computer, uh, now, this is, <laughs> this is a little bit old. So this is an old-style disk hard drive. Um, and uh, most of the ones nowadays are actually solid state, so they don't use this kind of thing. But um, I guess it's not that long ago that hard drives used to have a spinning disk, and there would be a read-write head, uh, kind of like needle-looking thing that points out over the disk, would have uh, a strong electromagnet at the end of it, and so that would be used to um, essentially read and write to the different parts of the hard disk. Anyway, they've kind of got away from those now, but uh, 
they're used to, the 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 electromagnets in those in those hard disk read write heads were actually quite strong. Um, some other applications uh, or some other devices that use electromagnets, uh, a doorbell. So here's a schematic of a doorbell. You probably um, have never looked at the doorbell if you have one at your home. But um, it wouldn't look exactly like this, but it would look something like this, where the idea is that when you press the switch, uh, that closes the circuit and basically the electromagnet uh, turns on. And so at that time, and so when that happens, the electromagnet basically um, attracts the bar on the left there. And that, and because it's attached to a spring, the bar will basically vibrate, right? And so that bar is a little hammer at the end of it. And so as it vibrates, it will ring the bell again and again. However, when you release the, the switch, the electromagnet turns off, and so the bar might, you know, will basically just vibrate back to its stationary position. So that so those are kind of fun. Some more advanced ones. Uh, a loudspeaker is actually a really good um, is actually a really good device uh, to look at if you ever get a chance. Uh, just like a you know just taking apart a speaker. If you ever have one that's that's broken, like maybe a small computer speaker uh, can be pretty cool. I'm actually going to link a video here um, so you can see uh, kind of how the guts of a of a loudspeaker are. Uh, or, or go and um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to talk about the other ones, but they all work uh, on the on the same principle of using electromagnets of varying strengths. Okay, so what we want to do in this case is we want to be able to predict based on the direction of the electric current. We want to know which end of the which end of the um, of the coil is the north pole. Okay. So as before, we're going to be using our right hand, OK? So this, even though I may be mirrored, because uh, you know the camera, um, this is my right hand. And so you should be using your right hand whenever you're doing this as well. The left hand is for suckers, OK? Don't use the left hand. It's the right hand, always the right hand. So in this, so if, in this picture, what we want to do is we want to start with our fingers, OK? We want to start with our fingers. And the fingers have to coil in the direction of the current. So it's a little bit tricky to see in this picture here, but the current is kind of coiling over. If I if this were if this were representing my coil of wire, right? If this were my solenoid, then I would be coiling my fingers in the direction of the current and my thumb points in the direction of the north pole. Okay? That's always how it goes. So your fingers curl in the direction of the current and your thumb points in the direction of the North Pole. So I'm looking at the screen right now, and I'm kind of doing what's showing in the graphic. If you do it, your, your finger may be pointing the other direction. I'm not sure. But for me, anyway, this looks correct. OK, so that's the right-hand rule. Fingers coil in the direction of the current. Thumb points in the direction of the North Pole. OK, that's the rule. But depending on how, it's, on how we draw our coil, this can look slightly different. So the so figure three, the one on the right there, I'm just going to start with that one, is actually, it's the same. It's precisely the same thing um, where we're using arrows. Uh, so, the, so the black there is the coil of wire. The arrows on the wire, drawn on the wire, are indicating the direction of the current, right, the conventional current. So in that case, once again, we our fingers would be, if this were, if this were our conductor, right, the way you're looking, I guess the way you'd look at it, your fingers are going to go like this, right? Because the finger, the, the current is in front, right? Coiling over, and the thumb would point towards the North Pole. Now, this looks backwards to me, but it should look correct to you. So I don't know. Maybe if it's not mirrored, we'll see. Um, so that one's, so that's that one. Uh, for figure two, the one at the bottom, um, you can see that the we've looked, we're looking at the cross section of a single coil here. A single coil. So the dot represents uh, current coming out of the page, and the X represents current going into the page. So this was a little tricky, but again, if I'm if I'm doing this myself, my fingers would be coiling towards me, and so my thumb would point in the direction of the of the of the North Pole, right? The direction of the arrows in this case. Uh, and A is just the same picture, just not as just not done as well, honestly. 
Um, okay, so let's let's try a couple of these. So in this case, uh, we want to um, indicate which way the current is going, indicate which way the magnetic field lines should go outside of the magnet, right? Inside of the or inside of the core is not really that important. We really want to treat this as like what would the field lines look like outside of the core because really that's all we can interact with. We're not going to be throwing compasses or something inside of the core. That's not really a thing. And, uh, and then consequently, which way the north and south poles would go. Okay, so let's look at A, okay? So decide, take a moment, decide for yourself, first of all, which way is the electric current going, okay? Based on the way the battery is drawn, you should feel confident drawing uh, uh, or, or at least knowing which way the, the current is going in that picture. All right? Okay, if you're not sure, remember that the long terminal at the, of the battery, you've got to start at the battery, so the long, the long arm or the long vertical line represents the positive terminal and the shorter one represents the negative terminal. And in conventional current, the current always flows from the positive terminal. So in this case, if again, if this is our, this is our conductor, then our current is going to be going down like this, going down. Again, the way I'm looking at it is going to be a little weird uh, for you. So for me, it'd be looking like this. But for you, I think it'd be the opposite. I think it'd be this way. Uh, yeah, so if it were me, I would take my right hand. I'm doing this, right? My fingers are, 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 point, are, my fingers are curling towards me, and my thumb is pointing toward my right. But if you were doing this, like if you're looking at me, I don't know if I get it, this is right, the fingers, again, will be... You'll be seeing your own fingers, right? You should be seeing my fingers now. And the thumb points in the direction of the North Pole. Okay, well, that actually gives us the third part, the North and South Pole. So the North Pole will be the one end, then the South Pole will be the other. Whichever way your thumb points, that's the North Pole. And for the magnetic field lines, remember, they follow the alphabet. So they go outside of the, outside of the core, they, they follow the alphabet from the North Pole to the South Pole, right? So, the, so and the field lines will be, uh, curling around like that. Okay, for B, it's the uh, same kind of situation, right? We want to. We always start looking at the battery. So again, look at the battery, decide which way the current should go. All right. I'll look at this myself here. Okay, all right, sure, makes sense. So if I were doing this one, again, remember that the current flows from the positive terminal. So, my, so for me, the positive terminal would be like this. Yeah, like that. Okay, so I would be seeing, I'd be seeing it like that. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah, okay, like that. And so my, it's from, for me, my thumb is pointing to the left. Okay, to the left. So that means that uh, the North Pole would be on the left side of that diagram, and the south pole would be on the right side of the diagram. And of course, the magnetic field lines will uh, will go from north to south. Um, we want to indicate which way would the compass needle deflect. And remember that when we're talking about compass needles, where the the compass needle points in the same direction as the magnetic field lines. Okay. So for A, again, look at the battery. Decide which way the current should go, and decide which and decide which way based on that which way the, which end is the north pole, and uh, then finally decide which way the compass needle should point. Okay. All right. So if I do this one again, looking at it the way I would look at it, yeah. So if I if I were looking at it, looking at the page myself, my thumb is pointing off to the right. That means that the right side of the solenoid is um, is the North Pole. And since the magnetic field lines come out of the North Pole, the compasses will deflect, well, both, both of the compasses will be deflecting to the right. So they'll be pointing to the right. For B, this one is maybe a little easier. So for B, the current is going like this. Oh, B is actually exactly the same. B and A are exactly the same. How boring. Okay, fine. That's fine. Uh, just because that's that they both have the current going 
um, the same way, right? Uh, from the top of the the top of the core, it's coming out, and the bottom, it's going in. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, so for C, what's happening here for C? For C, our current is going in like that and like that. So that means that the north will be the top, and the south pole will be the bottom. So that means that the uh, the compass needles will both be deflecting to the top. <clears throat> OK, um, if you want to increase the strength of your magnetic field, which you might want to do, there are a couple ways that you can do it. The first thing is that um, your magnetic field is proportional to your current. So the more current through your coil, the stronger your magnetic field will be. Also, the number of loops, or turns, as it's sometimes called in the coil. Uh, the more turns you have, the more loops, the stronger your magnetic field is going to be. And the last one is a little bit of a tricky one. It's called the permeability of the core. Now, we spend more time in grade 12 talking about this, but the idea is that I said at the beginning that a solenoid can have an air core, meaning that there's nothing inside of the coil. It's just kind of a coil. Maybe sometimes it's wrapped around plastic or cardboard or something, but there's nothing inside of it. So that's basically the weakest situation that you can have, but you can also put things inside of that core that can increase the magnetic field. And the best thing to use, well, maybe not the best, but like one of the best things to use is soft iron. So a soft iron core is just basically uh, kind of like a block of iron that isn't magnetized. Like we're not trying to, we're not trying to trick you here. There's an unmagnetized piece of, of iron and you just put it in the core and you get a much stronger magnet as a result. Now we're gonna move on to the motor principle. And the motor principle is really like if you've ever seen um, an electric motor, the motor principle is, is pretty cool, and it's how, thing, it's how things work. Just like before, just like when we were talking about Orsted, uh, Orsted's um, discovery, we need to have a current-carrying conductor. But the difference here is that we're not focusing so much on the magnetic field produced by the current-carrying conductor. We're actually looking at how that current-carrying conductor behaves in the presence of an external magnetic field. So in both of, the, both of the diagrams here, you can see I have a horseshoe magnet. And depending on which side of the, depending on which way the current is flowing, and depending on which side um, or which pole is the north pole, then that will tell you whether the, the conductor is deflected up or is deflected down. Now, like, like in the last slide, um, the amount of current passing through the through the conductor is actually quite important, and so is the, the field strength, the magnetic field strength of the magnet. So if you want to see a really, really amazing demonstration of this that I always like showing in class, then click this link and check that out. <clears throat> in the meantime, we need to come up with some way of predicting, right? some kind of physical way of predicting. If we know which way our current is going, we need to, know, we need to be able to predict which way our, uh, our um, conductor is going to deflect. Will it deflect up, as in the first case here, or will it deflect down? So here's how we do it. We need to apply a, we need to apply the right-hand rule once again for the motor principle. I gotta tell you, it's really, it's it's really you have a really hard time doing physics if you if you didn't have a right hand, but you could still manage. So here's how it works, okay? The idea is your thumb points in the direction of the current. So if this is my I'll use this one. So if this is my current carrying conductor, I need to know which way the current is flowing, and my thumb goes in that direction. So I'll just say that way for now. My fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field, we're going to assume in this case is a straight magnetic field, which is fine for our purposes. So fingers point in the direction of the external magnetic field. And then my palm, in this case, pushes up on my conductor. Okay? So again, let me do that again. Thumb in the direction of the current, fingers in the direction of the magnetic of the external magnetic field, palm in this case pushes up. If I had done it the other way around, thumb pointing in the direction of the current, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, palm pushes down. Let's try this out. So for A, remember that the that the the magnetic field is going to flow from the north pole to the south pole. So let's start with actually let's start with the thumb. So for A the current is coming out of the page. So that means that my, if I'm looking at the page the way I should, and you should do the same, 
my thumb is going to be pointing towards me, right, out of the page. And then my fingers will point from the north pole towards the south pole. So that means that my palm is going to push that conductor to the left. So that conductor is going to get pushed to the left. For B, again, if I'm looking at this one, this is a little hard on my wrist, but that's okay. My thumb is going to go into the page. My fingers are going to go from the North Pole to the South Pole, and my palm pushes the conductor to the right. Okay, and so for the last one, this is really difficult on my wrist. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'll try, though. So the electric current, and it's also because it's a three-quarter view, which is really, really bizarre. Anyway, the electric current like this, north to south, so my palm pushes up. So that wire is going to go up. Okay, so that's basically that. I'd like you to check these questions in your homework just to make sure that you can apply the right-hand rule for solenoids and the motor principle because there will be a couple questions on those in your exit card this week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.